please submit your questions using the Slido link. I would now like to pass the time to Professor Suresh. Thank, thank you, Ralph. Um, thank you, President Kagame, for your uh, very thoughtful lecture. Um, when I first uh, visited you about six years ago, one of the things that struck me was uh, the passion with which you made commitment to education, uh, not just technological education, but education more broadly, and not just for Rwandans, but also expanding it to others from Africa. Can you uh, tell us about uh, some of the recent developments and your aspirations uh, in, in the areas that you referred to, some specific programs that you may have, and uh, some initiatives that you have put in place? So if we start from the very point that, uh, again, seeing what has happened here in Singapore or some other countries, and particularly for ourselves, thinking the same way and uh, modeling some of those things we want to do on, on what has happened before what we did and, and in countries like Singapore, investing in people and their abilities to do different things they want to do, skills and acquire knowledge and, and so on and so forth. It all starts with education. So in therefore rebuilding our country, the first thing that came to mind is how do we invest in our people and the starting point and the most important thing and the best way is to do with education. We looked at therefore making it affordable, making it uh, accessible, and, and more or less a right for, for every Rwandan. Uh, and, and that's how we moved, for example, from you know, having, uh, as I said earlier, education for even primary or secondary uh, something that was rare to, for citizens to access, but make it available on our part. All the first 12 years uh, are accessible, are affordable, and the government ensures that uh, young people who should be going to school actually go to school. Uh, that, that was the starting point. And then the next thing is to focus on the quality of education started focusing on and also making a selection of what people in the end study that uh, make or really have a, a huge multiplier effect on the quality and the skills and, and that is mathematics, sciences and of course the language to be able to communicate easily with the rest of the world which was English. So that, that is really what we we started with, uh, and, and that was fundamental to us. And we, we then we have continued to start uh, building from there with initiatives such as uh, creating a Kigali Innovation City, where we put together academic institutions with uh, uh, startup companies and also uh, possibility of accessing finance. Uh, almost in the same uh, environment. Uh, these are things we have continued to work on and also collaborating with other African countries. Uh, and of course, as I said earlier, we, we've been happy to closely work with the Singapore and uh, learn from the many uh, examples uh, from here. Thank you. Uh, here is a question from the audience. What lessons would you like to share for the next generations around the world? Uh, and I would add to this, I think part of the uh, thinking behind this question is also given all the geopolitical developments around the world, uh, and Rwanda has gone through, uh, as, as you uh, mentioned in your lecture, uh, a very traumatic genocide not that long ago, only 28 years ago. 
So given that, what lessons uh, would you like to share for, for the younger people and the next generation? Well, the, the, all these challenges the world uh, is, is facing and almost every part of the world going through such uh, turbulent times originating from and with one place and then uh, having uh, uh, effects on almost uh, uh, every other part of the, of the world, even one you would assume has uh, no relationship with the cause of, of the problem. Uh, it, it's not something that just happens in a vacuum. It's, it's, it happens and is affected or affects the interconnectedness of the globe, of the whole world. Uh, it teaches us lessons that the world uh, is very well connected. So. The young people, as they grow up and with the aspirations that uh, have been so much talked about, they really had two important things which are part of it. They've got to be thinking of their contribution to creating a more stable world. Even if you think you are in a part of the world somewhere, one may be deceiving themselves that it is a distant part of the world from where everything else happens. But anyway, in the end, you are either affected or you affect what is happening. And so think about stability and the contributions every individual can make or individual country and society can make towards that. The second one has to be thinking about is the sustainability uh, and durability of this stability we are talking about. So it, it's not, it's never too early to think about that. So from the young age, people growing up, benefiting from education, experiences of different kinds, those two should always be at the back of everybody's mind. Thank you. Um, another question is, uh, uh, with innovation and technology as a centerpiece of the policy for development, um, can you talk about specific mechanisms that you have in mind to attract, uh, not, not only to, to have talent development within Rwanda, but to attract talent from around the world to engage with Rwandans. And uh, can you say a little bit about policies and mechanisms that you have put in place that would facilitate that? Yeah. It begins with um, security. The country in a society needs to be secure, well governed, and have clear policies as to where they are coming from and where they are expecting or the choices they have made to where they need to be for the future. Once these are clear, there are always going to be people interested in being part of that journey one way or the other. They are interested because it provides opportunities for what they may be interested in doing or have already, uh, already doing. But it also reassures them that they are going to be able indeed to do what they want to do for themselves or with the country where they, they want to do that. Uh, and that is particularly with Rwanda, that's our understanding is to be clear, uh, both for ourselves, but also for those who we may need to work with. 
what we stand for, where we are coming from, where we are going, and that environment we provide for people to feel comfortable that they can associate with Rwanda or work in Rwanda and uh, be able to thrive and grow. One of the successes uh, in Singapore, uh, including in the academic context, has been the ability to coordinate the work of government, industry, and academia in uh, almost a seamless way. Even on our, our own campus at NTU, um, we have multinational companies that have a presence, as we were discussing earlier today, um, supported by the Singapore government, different agencies of the Singapore government, uh, and also involving large numbers of faculty and students. This gives opportunities for us not only to have a connection between academic work and the real world, but also have the ability to translate discoveries from the lab into products and processes that will benefit society and industry. Um, in Rwanda, you have uh, a very young population, and you mentioned that 70% of the current population of 13 million people is under the age of 30. And uh, given that young population, and given your um, uh, emphasis on, uh, uh, on innovation, can you talk about the public-private partnership uh, and policies that you have put in place that would make it easier for Rwanda to move to the next, take the next quantum leap? As, as you completely, I mean, you are right in what you just said. Um, and uh, Rwanda is no exception. It follows that uh, line of thinking as well as the pathway to the future growth that we are, we are, we are and development we are seeking to achieve by bringing together these important elements uh, uh, that from the academia, from around business, entrepreneurship, government policies, and so on and so forth. So uh, therefore, over time, we have been able to put laws in place that provide for private entities to be able to work and thrive on their own, also for public-private partnership to, to happen, uh, like we see in, in the areas I was talking about, where we have created this Kigali Innovation City, it's basically a government that has created that platform. And at the same time, invited private people to invest, which they have done. And then around that, there are academic institutions that have also been part of the link of the whole chain that makes uh, things work and, and, and be able to, to move on. Uh, for us, the, as the government, we have provided environment, we have outlined what we think should be done, uh, and collaboratively, there is clear, or there is clarity in what is expected of everyone as we participate. Another question uh, uh, has come is, Rwanda is a beautiful country, and you said there are a number of Singaporeans who live and, uh, and, and engage with, uh, with Rwanda, uh, especially in business, commerce, and so forth. Um, uh, of course, uh, some of the tourist attractions in Rwanda are very well known around the world. Um, but still, I would say that uh, having lived in Asia for the last five years, there are a lot of things about Rwanda that are not that well known to an average Asian uh, about what the country has to offer. And that's true of uh, some many parts of Africa as well, more broadly. So if you were to uh, attract more of 
uh, the population of Asia to come and visit Rwanda uh, beyond technology and science, what are some of the things that uh, you would like to tell them uh, about the highlights of, of Rwanda? Yeah. Uh, in fact, linked to the previous question, what we have done, for example, we've been creating institutions, but mainly to interface between the public and the private. Like we have uh, Rwanda Development Board, and the whole idea was to make Rwanda known to the rest of the world, but also to keep working on what Rwanda needs to be known for that actually ac ac attracts different parts of the world, in, in, in other words. And it, it builds on practices. For example, this Rwanda Development Board is responsible for what you knew was widely known and was spearheaded by the World Bank, the ease of doing business, uh, meaning how long does it take for anybody interested in investing, how does it take for somebody to register a company, to do this, or to acquire this, and resident permits or visas or different things. So we, we looked at the whole package of things <clears throat> and make sure that these are known, that when you come to Rwanda, you are likely to experience efficiency, there is what predictability, you know what to expect, or you easily access what is available and at the lowest cost that we can afford. So in that, it involves communicating, making sure that therefore this helps, or this board helps to have different government or private entities uh, communicate, not only among themselves, but with the rest of the world. Uh, so this is through which uh, therefore the, the rest of the world may be in the end comes to know Rwanda. Uh, for tourism or for uh, conferences uh, as that is happening today, we see it growing, uh, but building on making things easier, life easy, meaning to do work with or in or through Rwanda to the rest of, of Africa. So there is this communication challenge that we have to always uh, find ways of improving uh, and making sure that everything about Rwanda gets to be known by the, the outside and, and be known the right way. It should be known because you can have all sorts of information coming from any place that is not necessarily true. So there has to be uh, that constant way of laying out facts to everybody for everyone to know. I was, uh, uh, w one of the things that uh, people are struck by when they visit Rwanda is just like uh, when they visit Singapore is how clean the, the city is. Uh, not just clean in the sense of governance but also physically uh, as a country, especially in the African context. And I was mentioning about your visit to, uh, to a friend a few days ago, and he said we need advice from President Kagame on how he should talk to his two sons on how to keep the house clean. So what do you do in the country to, 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 uh, to make sure that uh, the, the, the physical infrastructure, the, uh, what, what are some of your challenges in doing it, especially uh, during COVID and in the post-COVID world uh, in, in, in Africa? Well, uh, fortunately, we are leaving the worst part of the COVID period behind us. There, is, uh, there has been a quick recovery from 
the two years, the, the economy, whole country, every aspect of life was hit hard. And now things are back into motion and moving uh, forward. But really, some of the things, again, are a part of the innovation we were talking about earlier. Coming from where we did ourselves in Rwanda, very, very low base on everything, we had to continue thinking and maybe think fast. What is it that will get you out of here in, from this very low point or we had uplift, not only the spirits of people, but also physically. People need to feel, you know, what they are doing is, is just raising them to a much better level of living. And um, so some of these things might sound literal things, or, but they matter a lot. For example, in, in, uh, the cleanliness you, you talked about. It, it, it may also extend to being a reflection of how you want to do everything else. But at the same time, I think the, the difference is, is very obvious from something clean and what is not clean. Even the first impression you get is that this is better than the other one. What follows is, what does it cost you? to have this, the clean thing, and not the other one. And what we found, and what everybody I'm sure knows, there are things within us that do not cost much. They, they, it only costs the thinking and the acting on it. I mean, in the old days, all of us, as we are born in different societies, backgrounds, and so on, but we have homesteads. We used to see at our early stages of, of life, you would see your different, uh, I mean, parents or mothers, especially in this case, cleaning out the homestead and tidying up things and so on and so forth. I mean, just elevate uh, that to another level. It could be a homestead, it could be a city, it could be a country. So how about people living in a city, in the country, organized and through planning and different things, actually get together and clean up? Not only clean up physically the things that we have to do, but also extend that to cleaning up our thinking and the politics and how we act and which can be measured from different results we see. Thank you. I think we are coming to the end of our session, so I wanted to ask you, are there any particular thoughts or ideas that you would like to convey to this audience? We have uh, uh, a very talented uh, cohort of, we have 33,000 students at uh, NTU, um, uh, uh, and we also have researchers coming from many countries from around the world. Uh, more than 250,000 living alumni in over 160 countries in the world. And uh, if you have a message to uh, the audience here, uh, we would uh, welcome your thoughts. Well, the message is uh, simple, much as it may be broad. In this room, there is unlimited amount of talent, ingenuity. There, and the world is full of challenges uh, affecting individuals, again, families, societies, and countries. But I think as human beings, we always want the best for ourselves. So we should be able to work together. I'm looking forward to bringing Rwanda closer to this uh, campus or this campus closer to Rwanda, but 
by that to other parts of the world. And uh, we should work together. We want to tap into their resourcefulness to address these challenges, whether they face, uh, whether these are challenges facing Rwanda or Singapore, the rest of the world, we can work together to, I think there are many challenges, but I believe there are more opportunities uh, and, and the ability within our hands to, to, to address these challenges. And, and that's what I can put to this audience. Great. Thank you, President Kagame, for uh, taking time from your very busy schedule to visit us uh, during your official visit to Singapore. It's and a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you again, and uh, happy to be here.